then we'll go. Okay, sounds good. Okay, so whenever you want to start. All right. Hey, guys, it's the first podcast from us people at Crucius Media. Um, my name is Andre. I am one of the founders of Cruises Media. We also have my partner, James. Hello. Yes. Um, we don't exactly know where we're going to be going with these podcasts, but we're hoping to make this kind of like a two-weekly thing. So once every two weeks, we'll be recording a new or doing podcasts, and hopefully eventually you guys can actually participate in the live feed so therefore we can actually read your comments you guys can actually participate in the discussion of course once we have more subscribers we'll definitely be able to do stuff like that absolutely um the first topic that we're going to be talking about is kind of something that's going on in the states right now and that is right to repair what is it and how it really affects us, because there's a lot of misconception in the whole electronics industry. And a lot of people think that um, electronic companies are kind of getting the upper hand in a lot of issues that pertain with electronics. And I kind of want to set a couple of records straight on what is your typical lifespan of certain things. Because mm -hmm. I've been in many debates with a lot of people saying that, oh, a laptop should last for 10 years, or a laptop should last for 15 years, or however so. I mean, that's Honestly, unrealistic. when you look at most computers, I think five years is kind of like a typical use case scenario. Yeah, five years is like for sure on the long side. I mean, yes... In theory, you could use those older computers, like the fifteen, like the ten, fifteen years. But what are you gonna do? Just look at the internet? Yeah. Like, like, yes, I can understand retro, retro gaming and retro stuff. But really, you're not doing laptops when you're talking like about retro. <laughs> yeah. Like I mean, don't get me wrong, I am I am wanting to get into the retro scene of computers, like especially the retro laptops and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I I want to pick up Commodore's only laptop that they made, which is a uh I think it's a C uh Commodore 64 actually. I think it's a Commodore 64. But anyways, I do actually want to get one of those. But the issue that I'm running into is, A, it's a European-only model. Mm -hmm. So I'd have to do a lot of retrofitting to make it work with anything. And I need an actual tube TV because there is no physical connections that could work for it. Yep. Because it's usually a proprietary connector from Commodore, which, mm -hmm. as you guys know, Commodore doesn't exist anymore. Yep. But I think one of the biggest reasons why a laptop can't last for let's say 15 or so years is because when you look over the period of five years technology changes by leaps and bounds and i remember back in the day uh the 8-bit guy did a video talking about many computer computer peripherals so mm -hmm. he looked at hard drive space he looked at ram he looked at processor specifically the clock speeds and basically kind of showcased a lot of a lot of ways that computers have grown over the many years and it's just kind of funny looking at it like he started with the first computer that came out with one kilobyte of ram and he's talking about how that was a big thing when it came out and this wasn't just a little computer that you carry around with you this was like a computer that would take up an entire room Mm -hmm. With one kilobyte of RAM. <laughs> oh, yeah, and it's crazy. And, like, just to the right of me is my computer that has 128 gigs of RAM. Like, yes. it's just mental the Which amount. Which is billions of times bigger. Oh, and it's yet huge. the factor is it's also much smaller than that oh. one kilobyte stick. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, right yeah. here, 
it's 106 or this yeah this is my 64 gig usb drive like yeah this is mental for like the size for some of the things that we're doing but at the same time just i don't know yeah like when you got the processors you mentioned the fact that that clock speed is probably not the best way to gauge a processor no you have to go off the ibc there was well as as he basically went into detail with his video and he admits clock speed up until a point it was a good way to gauge how powerful a processor is mm -hmm. but once we actually got it to the point of dual core and where things like memory cache really became a huge defining role of a processor suddenly clock speed is not really a good way of gauging it yep like you look at my laptop for example which has a quad core cpu that's mm -hmm. four separate processors that are able to go at 4.6 gigahertz yep and translate 32 megabits per second worth of data yep if you look at my my tower which is currently at a commission um that has an eight core cpu each running at 4.8 gigahertz yep and that has a 60 64 megabit cache mm -hmm. once again like i said that's why clock speed isn't necessarily a good way of factoring because clock speed hasn't really gone up a whole lot in yeah. the past 10 years or so it but you'd say cores it... have and so has the actual memory cache and whatnot and how the memory is actually um translated i guess i mean it also comes down to your um i believe it's ipc yeah speed so the actual iterations per clock that it can actually run so yeah. yes from 100 from 100 years ago from 10 years ago something running at four gigahertz versus today the iterations are completely different so you, you can't consider oh 10 years ago, my 4 gigahertz processor ran this fine, so it there's no upgrade to this 4 gigahertz processor. Actually, there is. There's like a tenfold because of the mm -hmm. IPC. And it's like, you can't go off of just your base numbers. You gotta dig in deeper. But, yeah. um, but I mean... Well, that's why, that's why, like I said, going based off of just simply one factor of how technology has kind of grown, especially with in relation to computers is kind of irrelevant per se. Yep. Like if you were to actually show the growth for processors, um, I'll actually see if I can find that video so you can link it. Sure. Yeah, because that's actually a really good video. Let's see here. It's one of his older videos. Let's see, computer, something to do with computer. Frick, where is it? Yeah, I have no idea where the hell the damn thing is. Hey, you can find it later. Yeah. But anyways, he, he talks about if he was actually just the graph that he made to show the factor of processor growth over the years because he basically shows a, a very big increase with processor growth and then it kind of takes a dip where yep. clock speed actually goes down yep but that doesn't necessarily mean that the processor itself is getting faster it's just the factor that at that point in time clock speed wasn't necessarily a huge importance as opposed to having multiple cores yep. or better ways of actually converting those data into actual stuff that we see on screen yep absolutely so it's like when you actually look at it having a super fast processor isn't necessarily always a bet always a good thing because mm -hmm. like if there's a lot of bottlenecks in the system sure your cl your processor can cl click a lot or theoretically process a lot of things but it's not quite as efficient oh, as yeah, it could absolutely. be absolutely what it comes down to the uh it's not always um beneficial to go by the most expensive processor out there for certain tasks yeah um well take for example back with amd effects like oh, yeah. the amd effects chip had 
massive amounts of clock speeds. And it was terrible. But it was a terrible processor. Yep. And then you look at, for example, the Ryzen platform, it's built on a whole different concept. Yep, absolutely. Where clock speed isn't necessarily prioritized, but it's prioritizing more, okay, let's get these things done as fast as possible. And then yep. we can scale onto these and then these and then these. Yep, absolutely. Like the instruction set makes it a hell of a lot faster without actually having to be a faster clicking clock. Mm -hmm. But I think we're getting too much into the technical side. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so going back on the whole right to repair, uh, phones, I would probably say three to four years would be kind of like the norm life expectancy. Yeah, and that's like the kind of like the tip where you're starting to really, I don't know, like, for example, I have my tablet here. I got this tablet back in 2000, what was that, 2000? 15 2016 so it's four yeah. years it's four years old well five years old it's pretty much to the point where i can't use it yeah um not because of battery life or because of um like the screen it's i've never had to replace anything on this model which has been yeah. really nice what it's come down to is how slow it is it yeah. is so slow. I'll hit. I used to watch Twitch on this when I used to stream a lot. It was to the point where I would hit the Twitch icon, go to the washroom, come back, and Twitch would still be loading. <laughs> <laughs> That's like trying to watch it on one of my really old tablets. And it's like I have I have one of the very first Android tablets. Nice. Like. It hasn't been updated for a while. Yep. Because, you know, a Android has went along since... Um, I think the furthest I can upgrade that is Android 4. Yeah, I don't... <laughs> uh, I'm curious. This thing is dead, so I don't think I'd be able to turn it on. Yeah, it's, yeah I'd have to it's plug mine in dead. to actually take it and out. And it's like... I've tried installing um, third-party software for the hardware just to try to get it to work better. And it just yeah. it adds too many glitches, and I said, "Do it." I'm just going back to the regular Android, um, but it's just it's so god awful slow. And that yeah. was, like I said, that was 2015, 2016, so six, seven years ago. So it's like if phones slow down as much as this tablet has, really to the point where it, your hardware limited, even four to five years, you're you're at your you're at your max. Yeah. Um, you're at your max in terms of this. But like me and you were talking about earlier, where Apple is trying to make it so that after one year, your phone gets bricked. That's a line that should never be crossed. I um, agree. I could understand if they said after like five years. Um, even, even after five years... Because, you know, there is, uh, take, for example, my dad, who is part of the CNIB, or for those of you that are in the States, the Canadian National Institution of the Blind. My mm -hmm. dad is legally blind. Mm -hmm. And one day very soon, I might also wake up blind. Because, mm -hmm. you know, glaucoma sucks. Yay. <laughs> but anyways, um, so they take a lot of the older, older iPhones, for example, yep. and actually install custom software. So that it benefits people that can't actually see. Now, of course, it does kind of have very limited stuff that it can do. Like it could do FaceTime, it can do uh, uh, TTS, and it can also do speak to text, which my dad refuses to learn how to how to use. <laughs> surprise, surprise! He's very anti-technology. But one of the things. things that he likes is that he can just simply say, "Hey, phone, call Andre." Mm -hmm. And it would actually dial my number instantaneously. Yep. It doesn't actually... It doesn't require him to actually physically pick up the phone and try and find out where the digits are or try and find me in the phone book. Yep. Like, essentially, it's running a kind of like a very handicapped version of iOS. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
but these are usually iPhone iPhone sixes, and so it's what they're using. Yeah, I mean, like, like even there, like an iPhone six is what are we on ten? So that's four years ago that that yeah. phone was released. So I think X I could, just came out. I mean, I could see it. Kind of obviously, I'm I'm all for right to repair, but I could see yeah. like if to protect Apple's interest, if you're really trying to go off the Apple, I could see that making it after so many updates to the iOS that certain phones don't work with the newer iOS. Yeah. Right. But technically speaking, this this iPod Touch, I can't upgrade any further. Yeah. Well, it's the it same. has the most recent version that it can run. It's the same with this thing, and yeah. it's not essentially brick. But at the same time, it is because apps, most apps, have to get upgraded for security reasons. So, mm -hmm. like, the apps will just stop working over time, essentially bricking the phone. Um, via It still works. You can still make phone calls. You can still text. But yeah. the usability of the phone goes down. Right. Well, like to be completely honest, I just use this more or less for um, personal time. Hmm. As sadly, you know how we've kind of shifted to a world without Flash, and most websites like um, the naughty websites don't use Flash anymore for their videos. I can't watch it on that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so here I am, kind of reading the um, the and mm -hmm. whatnot so it's like there's still pictures they don't quite work as well as a video <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean that's kind of i don't know it just i can uh i can understand why the company might want to like brick a phone so it's like they can't have an old phone and then have the person oh apple sucks because i have this old phone and it doesn't work anymore but at, like at the same time it's like how far do you go with that 